As you can see here, there are a couple hundred stable nuclides, meaning that these stable nuclides and these alone have the correct ratio of neutrons to protons. Too high a ratio of neutrons to protons, and a neutron is turned into a proton and an electron. Again, beta decay. Too high a ratio of protons to neutrons, and a proton is turned into a neutron and an anti-electron, positron decay. Lots of scientists have thought a long time about how this correct ratio could be specified in a formula and what factors influence this ratio. As implied by the line here on our Z versus N graph, it would be great if we could describe a line that went through the stable nuclides. Scientists have actually done a good job of this, and they've found, among other things, having an odd or even number of nucleons affects stability. Here is a graph of a particular group of nuclides with an even number of nucleons, namely 102 neutrons and protons together. The horizontal axis gives the number of protons, or Z, of the particular nuclide, and the vertical axis gives the energy of the ground state. Looking at this graph, we can see why some nuclides are unstable. They're trying to get to the bottom of this energy valley by changing neutrons into protons, or protons into neutrons, driven by the energy difference between their ground state and the ground states of the nuclei at the bottom of the valley. Think of water falling on upper slopes of a mountain valley. Driven by gravity, the water loses its potential energy by running down the slope to the river at the bottom of the valley. The graph is typical of even-numbered nuclides for a given A. There are usually two stable nuclides at the bottom of the valley, in this case ruthenium-102 and palladium-102. You can also see that there are actually two valleys here. One is for even-even nuclides, which have lower ground state energy, and odd-odd nuclides, which have higher energy and are therefore more likely to decay. For odd number of nucleons, the graph looks quite different. In order to be odd, there must be an odd number of either protons or neutrons with an even number of the other sort of nucleon. The energy valley is generally steeper than even A valleys, meaning there's more driving force in decay, and there's usually a single stable nuclide at the bottom of the valley. In this particular case, it's barium-135. If we look at all the stable nuclides as a whole, 60% of the stable nuclides are even-even. 38% are either even-odd or odd-even. And a mere 2% of stable nuclides having an odd number of neutrons and an odd num number of protons are stable. And these are at such low Z that the nuclides have no choice. If you will, they're forced to be odd-odd, and there's just not room to maneuver. Looking again at our graph of stable nuclides plotted as a function of Z versus N, we also note that there are what is called magic numbers. These magic numbers are favored by the nucleus, just as closed atomic shells make atoms unreactive chemically because they're already at their lowest energy. Thus, noble gases are produced by closed shells. Likewise, it seems there's some sort of shell within the nucleus that produces a lower energy ground state, making the nucleides exceptionally stable. These magic numbers are 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, and 82. Nuclides that have double magic numbers of neutrons and protons are an exceptionally stable. Helium-4, having two neutrons and two protons, is in a class all by itself. It is so stable that it can be ejected from a large nucleus as a form of decay. We call this alpha decay.